How's it going guys? It's Reaper106 here doing another um, video again for you. Now this video is going to be different from those Vine videos and those short funny joke videos I did. This video is going to be actually getting back down to unboxing. EDC. Stuff that you guys want to see. The reviews. You know about this boot. You know stuff like that. Now I got this boot off of eBay. Now, people, I know people are already commenting in the comment section saying, oh no, that's just bad, you know, it could be a fake or something like that, you know, with, you know, fakes, what I mean is by Rothko, um, you know, they're so cheap and all this stuff, and, you know, I actually had a pair of Rothko, and I actually had the genuine, I actually had the real stuff, the real military boot, and I had Rothko at the same time, and I tried Rothko, and I hated it, I really did. I got it from DI back when I used to live in Utah, it was like 10 bucks. Well, anyway, well, I got this boot off of eBay for a good price. Now, I'm happy, I really am happy I have it. Now, saying that, let me have a drink of coffee. You know, there was nothing great than doing an American unboxing video on a pair of military boots. are brand new, I might add, that I got on eBay with a cup of coffee. Now, sellers 100%, which is awesome, you know. Um, saw these boots, I wanted it. Um, I was the first bidder on it. Then I checked back later before the day it's going to end, before the time. A whole bunch of people bid on it, right? And so I bid on it one last time, and I win. And I'm happy. Now, I just uh, left the seller a nice feedback. I'm not going to tell you guys what I, well, I'm not sure if I should tell you what I said on the feedback. It was positive, it really was, but I just don't want you guys to go down and track that seller and all this stuff. And so, yeah. But yeah, that seller was really awesome and all this stuff. And I got these boots for a good deal. I really did. You know, if you see some of these military boots, they go for like 100 bucks tops used and brand new and all this stuff but I paid like 55 60 bucks I think it was like 55 bucks for these boots brand new with the box and all but yeah if you get it brand new without the box you usually paying about 60 65 100 which I think is freaking ridiculous okay in my opinion and so now I saw these boots I liked it now actually hang on a second let me uh Okay, I'm back. Had to go get my other pair of boots I got from eBay. Now, this is going to be a long video, probably about 40 minutes, sorry. Um, I just I just really do a lot of boots. I talk a lot about military boots. Um, they're really great, in my opinion. Now, the reason why I wanted these new boots I got off of eBay that I paid 55 bucks for. They're not black, they're tan. I, I wish they were the Coyote because with tan... They get more dirty if you seem to notice. I have a pair, but they're back in storage. And so I got these ones because I'm down here and it's going to be a while before I get up there. And I just saw these. The price was right. The time was right. I had the money. So I jumped on it. So now, these boots are tan. I don't mind tan, but after seeing the new regulations for the military, how OCP, op, uh, was it, operational camouflage pattern or something like that. I can't remember exactly. They were they went with a coyote brown color, which is kind of like tan. Actually, no, strike that. It's not tan. It's darker. It's not dark chocolate, which I think is a ridiculous color, in my opinion. But, yeah, it's a coyote brown, which looks better than tan, in my opinion, because it doesn't get dirty as much. It's not as visible as much. And that's what I mean by I don't like tan boots. I like them, yes, but I hate them because they get dirty so much easier and it stains and it's honestly I cleaned a pair of boots I cleaned two pair of boots that were uh, tan and I don't know and I know what I'm talking about and it does get dirty really fast and it just sucks you know but now if you get a black boot like these ones these ones are the ones I got off of eBay these are the Belleville 700 now these boots were awesome 
Now, the lady who sold them to me was really nice. I got these for a good deal. Now, um, these boots are 100% brand new without the box. I didn't mind it because I know Bell, but I already know what the box looks like. And so I didn't care. So I got these boots anyway, brand new and all this stuff. And when, the, when I already bought it, the ladies, you know, she's checking it again, stuff like that, before she sends it. And then she sends me an email on eBay. And she sends me a message, email on, on eBay. Okay. Well, anyway, she found out that these boots, I guess they came separated after they sat and sat for so long that the glue just, I guess it just came dry or maybe Belleville used, um, maybe they didn't put enough glue on it, I'm guessing. Belleville is a great military boot company. 100%, I will trust my life with the Belleville boot. 100% throughout time and time, over and over again, I will always trust Belleville's. And so, I always warn Belleville's, I love it. The style's the same, it's classic, you know, they... You know, if it ain't if it ain't broke, why fix it? You know, why improve it? You know, or maybe improve it a little bit, but not so much. Well, well, you notice that there's a change in the style and the boot and how it feels. You know, or you know, if you're gonna improve a boot, improve it drastically, that the comfort and the feel feels a whole lot better than what it was, like say, 2012, uh, 2000. And it feels a whole lot better, but still the design and all that stuff is still the same. Great. I love Belleville's. I really do. I love Belleville's. Um, that's how I pronounce it, Belleville Boots. Um, I used to pronounce it Belleville Boots, believe it or not. And then my friend corrected me, and he told me they're called Belleville's. And so, yeah. But anyway, yeah, so these are 700s. Uh, anyway, she told me that, um, that's not really good boots, show you? Here we, oh wow. Okay, you see this? See this separation right here where my uh, board finger is and right here on my right hand? Oh, you see that separation? Well, see the shoe glue? Yeah, that goes all around. Or well, anyway, yeah, she told me like, hey, I noticed there's some uh, separation in the boot. I said, oh! That, I did not, I didn't even see that either. Like, seriously, 100%. I seriously did not. I looked through the pictures, and they look 100% brand new to me. She told me that, you know, they're still brand new. She just noticed the separation when she was getting ready to pack and all that stuff. She said, do you still want it? I said, yes, please. I still want the boots. I still am interested in them, you know. Because, you know, those boots, 700, 700 by Belvoes, they go for 219 230 tops off the official website or any other place you can get to. But I got, I paid like uh, $63 plus 23 bucks for these boots, right? On eBay. It was a buy it now. So I just went, bought it. Well, anyway, time was right and all that stuff had the money. Well, she told me, she said, okay. Um, so she said, are you still interested? I said, yes. And she said, okay. Well, uh, because I didn't know it was a separation in the boot. She went, I need to get some coffee. She said, this is what I'll do. I'll tell you what. I'll issue a refund for the $63 and you just pay for the shipping, 23 bucks. I said, okay, no problem. Thank you. You know, I still am interested in this boot. And, you know, after that, I left her a good feedback, you know, because the boot still looked good. And I told her, like, yeah, I can easily fix that. You know, I live in Vegas. We got shoe fixers. We got shoe stores out that fix shoes that they're called cobblers. Why are they called cobblers? I don't know. Now, so it's pretty easy and all this stuff. But yeah, so 23 bucks for those pair of brand new boots. Well, they just need some more glue. And, you know, I saved 230 bucks. 200, um, I saved about 200 bucks, 210, $210 or $200. I saved on these $23 boots. They're great, and we fixed them up fine. We did have some trouble because um, we use shoe goo. See this clear stuff? This is shoe goo. We use this shoe goo, and you guys wonder what this black stuff is. I'll tell you here in a bit. Now, we use shoe goo from Walmart, right? 
Actually, let me just get it out and show you. Here's the shoe goo that we got from Walmart. This one's a brand new one. The other one's thrown away. But yeah, we did use this one. It worked great for a day. Then after that, it just came apart. It started separating again. I was getting pissed off. And so, what I decided to do was sand it. Take my uh, Victoria Knox Swiss Army knife. I took the small blade. And I know a lot of people are going to get pissed off at me at this. But I cut lines. I cut grooves into the foam. Right here. Right there. That cushy part. Also, that's another thing you'll see on Belleville boots. If you get them on eBay, you will never see this layer. You'll never see this layer, the vibram outsole, the cushion, and the upper part of the boot. You'll never see that when you get it from the Fisher website. It has this rubber thing, and we'll get to that later when I open up those other pair of boots. Well, anyway, we used shoe goo. Again, glued it up. It worked okay for two days and then when I got wet because it was raining really bad down here in Vegas and I was walking in the riverine when I was at an HRA site now my boots got wet my feet were dry because it's Gore-Tex but the cushion the sole it sucked all that water and I guess the shoe goo got wet even though shoe goo is waterproof I guess it really couldn't handle that much water and so so that being said, it came apart, so I got mad. Then I went to Walmart, to Wally World, as you guys would call it from what I heard. Well now, I got some of this. Loctite, shoe glue, flexible, rubber, leather, vinyl, canvas, permanent repair, practical, any shoe, precise application, impact, water, temperature resistant. I haven't opened this one yet, I only got one. But I probably will use this, or maybe use the other one I'm about to show you, on this crack. I'll probably use this shoe glue on this seam right here where it's a little bit cracked, as you guys can see. So, I'll probably use this since it has a precise applicator. I might use this, I don't know yet. Then I saw this other one, another brand that I dealt with before when it came to thread lock through thread tight, you know, to lock tight, as you, you know. Well, this one is called, yes, it's going to be dirty and all this stuff. This one's called Pomatex. Uh, Pomatex. This one is a adhesive sealant, black silicone. General purpose of adhesive for interior or exterior use. Seals and insulates weather resistant. Black silicone. Is he adhesive sealant? So I thought I'd try this on my boot, and um, first time I did try it, I didn't add enough. I got dirty. I got my uh, I got my white T-shirt uh, underwear dirty with this. I got my white PJ shorts dirty with this. This thing gets everywhere. So when you guys work with this brand, the adhesive sealant, black silicone, the brand Pomatex. I highly recommend you guys wear some kind of latex gloves or some kind of medical gloves or whatever. Not like the mechanic gloves. Just like, you know, like the really thin latex gloves. Nitrile gloves, you know, pretty much like the doctor gloves. Well, anyway, and then we're on apron too, you know, and put something down. Well, anyway, this got over everywhere. As you guys can see, I definitely got the whole thing all blacked and all that stuff. Well, it worked great. Apparently, I didn't add enough to it. So, it came apart. I was a little bit upset, but I'm like, I was looking at the boot before I got upset. I'm like, and this stuff does seem better. This stuff does seem better than shoe goo, in my opinion. Now, that being said, I put the Permatex on. Let it dry and all that stuff. Take it out after it's all done curing. It's... It, it works great, come home, it's starting to separate again. I look at it, I get a little bit mad. But then I realize I didn't add enough. So this time I decided to go hog wild on it and use a lot. I mean a lot. Let me show you a good example. This one's a good example. My right boot. Now, 
you see this where it's all like on the outside and all well that is from being put on a lot especially right here see that how it's all right there well that is because I added a lot where I squeezed it together really tight as I can and it started oozing from the side. I mean like really oozing from the side. So I took a popsicle stick, I started I started spreading it around, you know, as I was like kind of, you know, kind of making a coat layer and all that stuff. Well, I did that and sure enough I kept on holding it and I taped it up with duct tape. Just a cheap uh, box tape, my bad. Not duct tape, box tape, clear box tape, cheap one you get from 99 cent store, Dollar Tree, general, you know, the dollar stores. Walmart probably. Um, so I do that, I tighten it up like really crazy. Well, we got a brand new wall and I like used about three quarters of that wall. On, on, I used probably about, uh, uh Probably half, yeah, probably about three quarters of that tape on one boot, and then the other quarter from that tape on the other boot, and then there was probably about maybe a eighth of that tape left, or maybe a sixteenth left on that boot uh, on that tape, and after that it was done. So next thing you know, I let it sit. I let it sit for like almost a month because I forget about it. You know, I don't want to really. Um, undo the tape and start wearing it after it says um, allow 24 hours before cure under normal conditions allow more time in cold or dry conditions to dry and stuff like that so I let it sit for like almost a month and I you know I'm, I'm wearing my cowboy boots and they start getting all stinky and sweaty they're all leather and all that stuff so I take them off and I undo the tape on my boots and I lace them all up I put them on and it did feel real to wear military boots again but I got the hang of it again, and um, yeah, since then, I've worn them. They've been great until that separation, because I'm guessing I didn't add enough, like where it's oozing out, like this shoe goo was when my dad did it, so I wanted to put a lot in there until it oozes out, and then I spread it with a, with another popsicle stick, right? Well, anyway, so far, ever since I've worn these boots, it has not rained since, and I am upset because I want it to rain really heavily down here in Vegas so I can test out these boots to actually give you guys a 10 out of 10 uh, review on this uh, Pomatex Adhesive Sealant Black Silicone. So, oh yeah, by the way, uh, side note, this is not recommended for gasket seals at all. Letting you guys know. That's what it says on the package, and I tried to take apart my boot with my two barrel hands when it felt kind of, you know, it was like 100 degrees out here in Vegas, and I, it felt like it was tacky, so I tried moving with my hands. I couldn't even budge it. I couldn't even twist it, tear it apart. Well, yeah, so do not use this as a gasket, sealant, or stuff like that. It says not to. Now, back to the boot. So, yeah, it has not rained out here and all this stuff, so I'm upset, but, you know, I keep on wearing it and all this stuff. So, now, back to the boot that I got from eBay. Now, the reason why I've been looking at this boot, because you guys all seen this sole. The Vibram Sahara. Sierra. Sahara. Yeah, Sierra. S-I-E-R-R-A. Sierra. Yeah, this is the basic classic one. And then I did some more research on my own. Um, this one is an old Vibram sole, but it's still... Like 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, recommended by uh, people who don't know about military boots and stuff like this. But yeah, this is still a great tread, but I've had two boots like this. One's in storage, this is my other one. I've worn this a lot, you guys really can't tell, but it doesn't, it still looks new, it does. But, um, because it's been sent for like a month, because I haven't put it on since it was uh, being glued and all that stuff. Well, I like this sole, but sometimes the rocks do get stuck in here for me. So, 
I still like it, but I'm just kind of tired of this look, I guess, you know, kind of a fashion thing in my opinion. I don't know. But uh, I do like this sole, the Vibram Sierra. It's a great sole. Now the boot I got on eBay. I did some more research. Now this new Vibram outsole, you can never really find it on other sh on other shoes except these military boots if you come across it on the official websites of the manufacturer who makes the boot or eBay or Amazon if you're lucky on Amazon. The new updated sole is called the Vibram Vibram. Yeah, we pronounce it Vibram here in America. There was a guy who did a video on how it's pronounced, and I guess, I can't remember where well, Vibram is originally, I think it's Italy, I, I don't know, I can't remember, but they say Vibram, or something like that. I have an accent, so I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so I'll leave a link to his video in the description box below, and um, you guys can go check it out and how it's actually pronounced and stuff like that. Well, anyway, this outsole is called the Vibram 360. Now, what's really great about it is the way it's built and all that stuff. Hang on a second. I'm going to try something really quick. Huh. Okay, never mind. Well, anyway, um, I'm going to put this stuff back, so excuse me. So, the Vibram 360 outsole is a great sole. It's an updated sole from that Vibram Sierra sole from what I found out in the red. Now, apparently what it is, it has lugs. Not your average Vibram um, lugs that you usually see on the basic classic model with the Vibram. Well, anyway, it's kind of like that original outsole, you know, where it's like a cross, uh, where it's like a cross uh, outsole mark, marking and all that stuff. Well, this one is the 360. It's kind of like that, but it's not. Now, what it is, it, it's designed to grip into the ground, you know, mostly into the dirt, you know, gravel and stuff like that. Maybe into wet, um, wet floors and stuff like that too. Um, some, some shoe cobbler said it's not. And I'll leave a link to that video where he talks about viral outsoles in the description box below as well. Now, he says that it's really not great to grip in the water, if I remember correctly, on the Vibram 360 outsole. Now, I think it's great. It looks nice. You know, I never had a boot with this outsole, so I thought I'd try it, because I always want to try it, you know, because I, like I said, I got tired of the Vibram Sierra outsole. It just looked the same for me, and it really didn't grip all that good to me, so I thought I'd try this updated so So now, I realized I should have gotten some coffee when I hit pause on the video. I'm going to hit pause again. Let me go get a cup of coffee. Okay, here is my box, my boots that I got from eBay. The brand is called McRae, M-C, capital R-A-E, since 1967. Now, to give you guys a quick history about me and what boots I used to wear. Back in the day, back when I was in middle school, 6th grade, I used to wear all these boots. Well, anyway, these boots were really nice. I didn't know what brand they were because, you know, I was, yeah, I was young at the time. And I liked these boots, but it really did upset me when, when um, those boots, you know, I couldn't wear them anymore and I, out, and I completely wore out the outsole. So what I did was I took my knife to it and I cut it up so no one could get their hands on it. That's me, personally. If I'm wearing a boot and it wears out and I can't even get it fixed or, you know, stuff like that, I just cut cut it up. You know, if, you know, because honestly, I do get attached to my stuff, even though I'm not supposed to. You know, like, it's a boot, it's a boot, but, you know, everyone deep down gets emotionally attached to an item, and that's okay. Um, so, yeah, so, McRae has been making boots since 1967. Now, another brand, I never tried this brand, McRae Boots, so I'm really excited to try it out. The brand I usually go with is Altamas, A-L-T-A-M-A. -A. Now, the first boot I had from them, well, it wasn't really at Tamas, it was actual real government issue boots. It had no name brand on it, it just had a, you know, size, NSN, number, and all that stuff. 
Yeah. Batch number, stock number, manufacture day, um, serial number, all that good military stuff. I would know because I used to be a government contractor back at Halo Air Force Base. Well, anyway, um, yeah, so I tried those boots. They were the Panama outsole. Now, I like those boots. They were all leather. They weren't waterproof. They were just water resistant. So, yeah, they were great. They are all speed laces. They were they were not laced to toe, but they kind of wore the laced to toes, and I like those boots. But when you wear the outsole really fast, it's all rubber. Once it becomes really slick and all that stuff, almost like this. So, like, the Vibram Sierra. So, like, you see this um, saw right here where my finger is, this one right here? Well, my first finger and my right finger, see that? Well, you see these little dents, these cuts in it? Well, if you roll this boot out long enough where you don't have these uh, dents and just comes really smooth and all that stuff, then you start to slip. And on those boots I had, they were like uh, the Altamas. Well, they didn't have the Altama name. They were the same design and all that stuff. They were actual real military issue ones. And they fit fine and all that stuff. I love them. And once the outsole roll out, I uh, became really flat and all that stuff. I would easily slip on water, on water floors that were a tile or painted. Or I would easily slip. And so that upset me. But well, the reason why I love those boots because they were 10 inches speed laces and all that stuff. I've gone down from 10 inches. That just sounds weird. But anyway, yeah. So they had... My dad loved those boots too. He actually grew up on those boots when he was back in ROTC at Camp Pendleton, the USMC. Um, yeah, back when Camp Pendleton used to have ROTC back in the day. Um, well, anyway, he grew up on those boots. Now, he likes those boots. I like those boots too because the outsole... It was the same tread as those old Humvees. You know, where you got the solid piece of rubber on the outside, then you're like, on the outside of the tire, you like have chunks here, you know, like missing, and then chunks here missing of rubber. And it was, it was pretty cool. It was a really cool design tread. Um, I, I'll look up that boot to a, a link to find a picture of it, and then I'll, and then I'll link it in the description box below where you guys go look at what boot I'm talking about. And so, yeah, those boots were really nice. Um, but they did get heavy, though, and you got it really soaked in water. Now, this is the brown box that I got from eBay, the brand McRae, for 55 bucks, brand new with the box. Now, what really does, I really do not want to open this, and I'll show you why. Look at this packaging, this box. The box is on the inside of the brown stuff. Notice the care and the presentation went into this when they wrapped it, the eBay seller did. Look at it, it just looks really, really nice and all this stuff. And I kind of just messed it up here, um, like right where my finger is. It's like, I kind of, yeah, so, so fortunately I, you know, you guys can't see me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I already poked a hole in this, so I'm upset. But hopefully, it didn't go through the box. So now I'm just deciding: one, should I open this up on live, or should I just go ahead and open it when you guys don't have to wait? So I'll just go ahead and pause the video, and I'll go ahead and open this, and I'll unpause it, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, give me about maybe five minutes, probably. <laughs> 